Hello ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say thank you for coming to my presentation. It's great to see you all. First of all, thanks for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Board of Exam Miners in my research proposal. Also, thank you, uh, dear Mrs. Pop, Dr. Hamida MSI, as my advisory lecturer. And also, uh, thanks uh, to Prof. Dr. Gatot Nasir Ahmad MSI as my advisory lecturer. And I would like to introduce myself. My name is Agam Fadila. I'm from Master of Management, Beach 2021, Faculty of Economics at the University of Jakarta. And today we would like to talk about my research proposal that the title is The Influence of Corporate Policy and Financial Performance on Firm Value with macroeconomic factors as the moderating variable. So in this occasion, we would like about uh, and talk about three chapters. And I'd like to give you a brief outline of my presentation. In the chapter one, we will talk about the introduction. And the chapter two, we will talk about the theory. And uh, chapter three, we will talk about the analysis method. So uh, this is the research background. As we know that create and maximize the firm value is the main goal in corporate finance, according to Brilley et al. in 2011, and also to Copeland et al. in 2000. So from that big statement, the firm value doesn't only reflect in intrinsic value at a particular time. So measurement of a fundamental ratio will be the main basis in determining value. So we will separate as two factors that refer to the firm value. The first one is the micro fundamental that are often referred to as of internal business factors. In this uh, internal factors, we use two terms here. Uh, the first one is the, uh, the company policy that we use in this uh, research is debt policy, dividend policy, and also the investment policy. And for the financial performance, we use profitability as the inter independent variable. And for the macro fundamental that are often referred to as uh, in external business factors, that macroeconomic or external fundamental factors, that is inflation, exchange rate, and also the gross domestic product or GDP. So next to the next point. So the property and real estate sector is very interesting to research because this sector also has several weakness, namely that this sector is very influenced by macro and micro economic condition. We know uh, the condition about the property and real estate is uh, become an alert of a country about the macroeconomic condition. As we know, uh, in Indonesia Stock Exchange that listed maybe 11 uh, sector. And why do we choose this property and real estate uh, as our uh, sample in this research? Uh, we know that two years ago in 2021, the biggest real estate uh, tycoon, namely is China Evergrande in China is collapsed and failed. That because they failed to pay the total amount of the debt that become a debt trap since that. Uh, the total amount of the debt is maybe ar around uh, th 30 million US dollar in 2021. Since that, uh, many about their project is becoming failed. And also uh, this phenomena is spread across the world. Uh, also to Indonesia, we uh, declining in our exchange rate at the time and also uh, our uh, economic growth becoming slow and also the commodity and export, export condition from Indonesia. And also we uh, have that momentum uh, many years ago 
in 2008 uh, which is in United States uh, America that Lehman Brothers is a company that engage uh, providing the market activity is also collapsed that because million of the customer is failed to pay their installment because the mortgage uh, condition at that time is risky and many of uh, customer can can receive the financing of the payment so uh, since that condition we choose the property and real estate uh, sector as our sample in this research and property uh, is always become an interesting sector because uh, the land price is always increased but the population uh, also will increase uh, any, uh, at, at any time so it is will be interesting so from that we can uh, uh, we have the purpose of this research uh, we have 10 purpose the first one is to analyze the influence of the policy on firm value and then the second one is to analyze the influence of dividend policy on firm value. The third one is to analyze the influence of investment policy on firm value. And then the fourth one is to analyze the influence of return on equity on firm value. And then the five is to analyze the effect of return on asset on firm value. And the six to analyze the influence of debt policy on firm value which is moderated by macroeconomic factors. And then the second is to analyze the influence of dividend policy on firm value, which is moderated by a macroeconomic factor. And then the eighth is to analyze the influence of investment policy on firm value, which is moderated by macroeconomic factor. And then nine is to analyze the influence of return on equity on firm value, which is moderated by macroeconomic factor. And the last one is to analyze the influence of return of an asset on firm value, which is moderated by macroeconomic factors. And then on to the, uh, the next point, we'll talk about the, the theory here. So we have a uh, grand theory and also the supporting theory. And for the grand theory, we use the theory of the firm, as we know, according to Salvatore in 2011, the main goal of the firm is, uh, according to the theory of the firm, is to maximize wealth or firm value. So it is the big statement that we used uh, in the opening before. And the value of the firm is a description of public trust or a, or a certain condition that has been achieved by a company and investor perception of a company are often linked to share price. And then we have a supporting theory for the debt policy. We will use about the capital structure theory. It is from the Miller and Modigliani that state about the using debt way more profitable rather than using the own equity. And then the second one is threat of theory which is, as we know, uh, the theory state that uh, when we use uh, debt, the risk will also increase. So when we use a huge amount of a debt, so we will gain about a huge amount of risk also. And then the, the third one is against the approach. So from this theory, a structure, uh, structure equity, or, or the capital structure is consists or combined to reduce the, the conflict interest um, across the management. So uh, the last one is the signaling theory. So the manager, uh, we, manager uh, that wanted the company to have a huge or uh, good prospect will increase their uh, using of a uh, debt because the investor would like to to prefer a company that have a huge debt. And then about the dividend policy, we use dividend irrelevance theory, the first one. 
So it state about the dividend policy of a company doesn't affect a firm value or even though the uh, the cost of the firm. And then the second one is birth in hand theory that this theory uh, it state about the uh, firm value can be maximized when we use uh, or when we conclude about the ratio of the payment about dividend policy. And then the last one is tax preference theory that we know that investor will prefer to avoid the, the payment of the tax. So instead they gain about dividend, they will are uh, hoping about the uh, capital gain from the uh, share. And then the last one is investment policy. In this investment is investment policy. The first the first one is signaling theory. The investor will know about the company by research or read the financial report or the annual report that where that they are very uh, support and happy when they know the company is increasing their uh, investment because. Investment is related about sustainability or related to growth of a company. And then the last one is a Fisherian theory that this theory state about the if if they if there any asymmetric about information between investor and also the management. Uh, so the external or the stakeholder. Uh, which is referred to the investor, so not worry at all because they have a, an asymmetric information between the internal and then the external. So we have a relevant research here. Uh, the previous research that I choose, uh, for example, is three. The first one is three uh, AC Sir Tanur in 2018. Uh, and published by the journal Management Business Institute Business Nusantara. The title was Pengaruh Profitabilitas Terhadap Nilai Perusahaan Dengan Struktur Modal Sebagai Verbal Intervening. And the conclusion of this research is showing that profitability and capital structure is significant to the firm value. And then profitability also significant uh, influencing the structure, uh, uh, the, the capital structure, and capital structure is uh, moderating uh, 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 is intervening the influence of profitability towards to the firm value or the capital structure. And then the second one is by Lalu Aditya Putra, 2016 published by Jurnal Ilmiah Mahasiswa Universitas Prawijaya. The, the title was Pengaruh Keputusan Investasi, Kebijakan Hutang, dan Kebijakan Nilai Individen uh, Terhadap Nilai Perusahaan. The conclusion is the uh, investment policy is uh, positive influencing the firm value. And then the debt policy also uh, significant influencing the firm value, but uh, dividend policy also significant uh, to the firm value. So that's uh, from Lalu Aditya. And then the last one is from Made Sukma Prasita Dewi and Inyoman Wijayana Asmara Putra, 2020, published by Jurnal Akuntansi, Universitas Udayana. The title was Pengaruh Faktor Internal dan Faktor Eksternal Terhadap Nilai Perusahaan. And the, and the result of the research is uh, profitability uh, have a positive impact to the firm value. And then dividend policy doesn't uh, influencing the firm value. And then financing policy uh, negatively impact to the firm value. Inflation negatively impact to the firm value, and then uh, uh, and then the exchange rate negatively impact to the firm value. 
and then move to the next point uh, as we know uh, this is the in the left is the theoretical framework that the individual variable uh, each uh, each by one each by each uh, is affect or the moderate by the economic uh, macroeconomic factor and so from this theoretical framework i would like to conclude this hypothesis as 10 hypothesis first the policy has a positive effect on firm value and then dividend policy has a positive effect on firm value investment policy has a positive effect on firm value return on equity has a positive effect on firm value return on asset has a positive effect on firm value and then the sixth macroeconomic factor can moderate the relationship between debt policy and firm value and then the seven macroeconomic factor can moderate the relationship between dividend policy and firm value and then the eighth macroeconomic factors can moderate the relationship between investment policy and firm value and then the ninth macroeconomic factors can moderate the relationship between return on equity and firm value the last one the tenth macroeconomic factors can moderate the relationship between return on asset and firm value and then until the last uh, chapter is chapter three we would like to uh, talk about the research method the research method of unit of analysis this type of research use a quantitative approach with a hypothesis setting type of research that explains the phenomenon of the relationship between variables according to things in 2006 a quantitative approach is used in research or scientific investigation and then how about the population the population of this research is the property and real estate sector that listed on the Indonesia Stock Exchange during 2017 and 2022 as many as 91 companies and then the sample the sampling technique in this research method uh, was using the purposive uh, sampling method but the the criteria used in the sampling in the study were as follows the first one, the property and real estate sectors in industry is still actively selling its shares on the IDX and is still list, uh, listed from uh, 2017 until 2022. So the result will accurately represent the current condition. And then the issuers that publish their annual reports consistently from 2017 and 2022 on the IDX and then the last one issuers who convey the uh, the need for reports with complete variables in their annual reports from 2017 until 2022 on their website and the ideas so uh this is the operational variable we have dependent and independent variable for dependent variable we use uh the firm value is proxy by tobin skew ratio that the formula is market value of equity plus book value of debt uh, divided by book value of equity plus the book value of debt. And then the independent variable that uh, we use uh, for a debt policy, we use debt to equity ratio as our proxy that the formula is uh, total liability divided by the total of equity. And then for the uh, dividend policy uh, that proxy by dpr or dividend payout ratio that what the formula is dividend per share divide, divide uh, div uh, divided by earning per share times a hundred percent and then for the investment policy we use capital of book value of asset that the uh a yearly asset div divided by total asset and then uh, for profitability we use two, two proxy that the first one is proxy by return on asset or ROA that uh, the formula is uh, uh, total revenue div divided by total asset and then the return on equity, the total revenue divided by total equity, 
and then we use BI rate uh, from the BI website, and then uh, uh, we use mid rate for exchange rate, which is a uh, uh, sell sell currency plus buy currency divided to. Uh, we use US dollar as our uh, proxy, and then the inflation uh, we get from the Badan Pusat Statistik and GDP also. And then for the data collection technique, this research obtained data taken from the Indonesia Stock Exchange website, namely idx.co.id. For each company that was the object of this research, Bank Indonesia, and then Badan Pusat Statistik or Central Statistic Agency, the, the data taken in it is in the form of annual financial reports, inflation, interest rate, exchange rate, and GDP to see the data needed for the research. And for the data analysis technique, we use the descriptive statistical analysis and then panel data regression analysis, classic assumption test, hypothesis test, and the robustness test uh, that we use market value edit as the proxy that uh, substitute the Tobin skew in the firm value. I think that's all for me. Uh, thank you for coming. I hope that what we share today be beneficial for all of us. Thank you very much.